तदेत्यम यथा सुदीप्तावकाफुलिंगा सहस्रश प्रभवते ये सूपा यथाक्षराधा सौम्य भावा प्रजाते त्र चापी तदे तत्सत्यम यथा सुदीतात्पावकाफुलिंगा सहस्रश प्रभवते ये सूपा यथाक्षराधा सौम्य भावा प्रजाते त्र चापी इन दिस टू वर्ड्स इज गिवन द हाईएस्ट डिक्लेरेशन सो वेन यू क्लब द वर्ड इन संस्कृत इट बिकम्स तदे तत् वेरी फर्स्ट संस्कृत वर्ड तदे तत् that is this satyam the truth know that to be this truth know that to be the truth as issue forth the flaming sparks of fire by the thousands so do manifold beings originate from the imperishable and verily return to it for oh, handsome one <laughs> somya bhavaha somya bhavaha means a handsome one you means you are a smart fellow man why is he why is the guru so impressed with the student even in the bhagavad gita when you when you uh, uh, read throughout the gita the lord has a great affinity to arjuna so he keeps calling him in various pronouns uh, he says o parantapa he calls him as o bharata rishabha means you are a bull amongst men you are such a fine soul means you you stand out amongst all men because you have that spirit of a bull in you you are a man a giver you are a sacrificer i love you very much you are very dear to me so throughout there is that words of endearment between the guru and the shishya and that kind of an atmosphere is necessary between a student and teacher for this knowledge to be transacted so here the student is being called to hand someone uh rendigar i know you always very handsomely dressed you are also a handsome one sir but can you please tell me why we tell you you are the youth icon the so, here i am just looking at that guru ji the word generally rare to see the error it could be a translation brand sir that's what i'm asking i'm asking the brand is very basic brand guru ji there is nothing so specific It's, bl- it's blackberry <laughs> <laughs> so why is he calling him as a handsome one but is he is he trying to interpret the handsome is uh, not in a physical level it is a more of an a intellectual when you when you translate the word called smart it's it is not the physicality here it is the student as i said the lord very speaks endearingly of arjuna he calls him as a bull amongst men because mm. of the prince he adopted he he was a leader a leader was one who sacrificed himself for the for the larger good of others so that impressed krishna the lord was mm. very with arjuna as a great warrior he was you no know? so many a uh, uh, synonym arjuna was called so in the context why do you think the the guru is uh, saying oh handsome one not required uh, uh, the verse could have ended without saying uh, somya bhava to remove that word also the the verse is complete but it is words of endearment 
somewhere there is a total satisfaction uh, from the guru perspective about the the achievements in the of the shishya so i am sure there is nothing wrong in expression nothing wrong in fact it is required it is always required yeah. that it's the some sort of a motivating factor i'm sure we use the word motivation now even those days also as a human being needs somewhere somebody has to appreciate somebody has to recognize the facts of your intellect or the thing so that reflection can come only from the appreciation from other side and from the guru perspective yeah yes there has to be an appreciation and the guru is very uh, pleased with the the purity of heart of the student mm. soul soul uh, he is also very uh, appreciative of the keenness of the student to know the truth to learn the truth and he is all the preparation that the student has done he is he is he is impressed how yes. much of uh, uh, sir you can come to me for some administrative issues or you can come to me with some serious question and mm. ask me guru ji i don't understand this concept bothering me for the last few weeks please explain you think what is it that really be interested in would really inspire me about you one who is helping with administrative work yes we are you are doing seva to the cause and we will evolve the foundation will grow because we need to have systems in place we will keep refining the systems so that the vehicle is in repair in good shape so that the knowledge can be shared so many students contact me every day but one who stands out is one who contacts me and says sir this i i i am struggling to understand this concept i want to know what this is so the keenness to know the truth the keenness to understand uh, the the higher truths mm. that's what the teacher is mighty impressed in the student that here is a student so genuine pure sincere he is well qualified that's why he says oh handsome one yeah so in english language don't we say handsome he is that handsome does but in in a in our understanding handsome is somebody who has six foot and have a smart and good appearing and all that comes in the in a general understanding but here the is more not from external from the internal okay. sir the real beauty in a person is not external the real beauty is internal internal what people love in you is not the the, the external what people are attracted to is your unselfishness is not your physicality what people love you is not physicality you know right in fact in the bhajgo in the book we learn this sir he says nari sthana bhara nabhi desham drishtva maga moha vesham yetan mam sava sadivikaram manasi vichintaya varam varam so he says there don't get into a delusion looking at the navel and bosom of a woman he says and he says that all that is nothing but mamsa vikaram he says all nothing but flesh and bone flesh. Form. if is is that what are you what is it that you are attracted to oh her fair skin peel the skin with the most beautiful people first uh, peeler only the skin top layer comes out it's so fine japanese peelers and japanese knives i'll get i'll peel out the skin and give you in a platter like sushi they cut that vegetable in a thin slice and give you i'll cut that skin and give you is that what you want oh the flesh okay collect all the flesh and give in a bowl this is what you like oh the hair put a few strands of hair in that soup that she serves you in more the pool of soup you will have to pull out few strands of hair from that soup what is it that you are in falling in love with you are not falling any single entity you take please be with me sir any single entity that you take 
you have a revulsion towards it, isn't it? But I put all together. What is put all together? Vasantama. You put all together. What is it? Put all the knowledge together. All of them. The goodness. Nari stana bharana videsham dushtva maga moha vesham yetan mamsava sadhavikaram yetan mamsava I am not it's the concept is not derogatory to women. The symbol is to enjoy. I'll give another example to justify it. But at this point, what I'm asking is any individual element you take, I said skin, flesh, bone, hair, her smile, her teeth. Okay, remove the teeth and give it to him. Let him put it on his uh, uh, desk and worship the teeth. So any individual thing, you have a revulsiveness. Are you with me on that? Yes. What people are falling is the totality. Outward appearance. It's separate, isn't it? Now, what is the totality? Totality is your original self. Wow. I'm still totality still... is the outward beauty. What the totality is the? Outward beauty. Outward, uh, the total is, is the total the put together is nothing but your illusion. It is Maya. That's what you are trapped in. Sara. You get trapped in is Maya. You get it. It lures you. It charms you. It it deceives you and then what happens you don't see the truth that lies behind it trapped to the maya get trapped in the maya and what gives life to that totality is that spirit tartman okay give him a dead body dead body of a miss world Sad incident after she got that uh, modded Miss World, next day she died. Okay, preserve the body and give the body to that fellow. Are you, oh, it's not, I'm not giving in flesh and bone and meat and blood. I'm giving everything together. Here is a lady in her prime youth and she is one of the Miss World. Give the body to him. Will he like the body? Run away from the body. So what is it that gives life to that? That is that self. So, what really that you are in love with is the self. And what is it that lets the self express is your unselfishness and purity. So, what people actually love in you is the unselfishness, the inner self that brushes out to a uh, a pure soul. If you are a pure soul, means if you are a, a person of purity or unselfishness, you will be loved. What is what is it that they are loving is the Atman. The, the purity of the Atman is expressing through your purity. For example, if I take a brass vessel, the tarnish of the brass it is it is tarnished. The brilliance is not seen because of the tarnish, isn't it? But the nature of the vessel is brilliance. I hope you all are getting what I'm saying. The purity of the self is only seen when I am pure. Otherwise, it's the tar like a tarnish that is covering the brass vessel. The Atman is not seen in a selfish person. If a person is gross and selfish, you don't feel a, an affinity towards them. So what actually people love you is what they love in you is your unselfish. 
is your purity and the self expresses through your purity, your goodness. This is what people love. So, not to take that example out of context of what Adi Shankaracharya said in Bhajagovindam, I said another example is the example of, let's say, your a family is trying to plan for a, a holiday. We have taken this example earlier. So much needs to be done just to plan for a holiday. Mm. There are four people planning to go for a holiday. First of all, the dates of all these four people must match. Right? Then the destination must be decided where all four will enjoy the same destination. Then the budget must match. Then the itinerary must match. After doing all that, you have taken into account every possible aspect in, the, in that holiday, the number of days, the places to see, where to stay, what to eat, what to do, what not to do. And the moment you go into the hotel, you check in, you, the hotel says, sorry, sir, the hotel is fully booked. Uh, the room that you wanted is not available. We can only give you tomorrow. The food is not according to your taste. The culture is not according to what you wish to. Everything you, you have to get up at an odd hour. You have to travel at an odd hour. You go have to adjust to a different time zone there. Your body is fatigued. You are running to get so many things done before that actual holiday. Work is under pressure. Your purse is being pinched every time you spend. Your child sees something and says, I want that, I want that and you have to pay in dollars or euros. You can't tell the wife will say, why can't you having come here? Why are you so calculated? Why don't you buy what he wants? End of the day, you are enamored by a holiday to Europe. But when you start putting that match together and you start breaking every element that goes into that holiday to Europe, what do you see? Everything has, every element has, every element in that trip to Europe is pain and agony. But yet you fall for the totality of trip to Europe. What is trip to Europe? Usha, you came up. What is trip to Europe? What is the totality? The same question I asked Vasantama. I hope you're thinking along with me. So what is the totality you fall a prey for? It is again an illusion and Maya, sir. Maya Guruji, and you only feel that you have done something. You have, uh, you have fallen for that illusion. That's all. All for the totality. The totality is the, it loads you of a trip to Europe package. But when you go through the individual elements, yes, you wish and think, I wish I did not go, off, go for the trip. Yeah, I had not undertaken the trip. Then uh, that's the reason as any, anybody goes into any trip, the first thing, the, the, the last thing that they say as a trip is coming is best is home. Home food is the best food. <laughs> Think and beat the comfort of the house. Then why do you have to run and spend and waste your time and energy and then realize home is best? To heave a sigh of relief after coming back. So holiday is a torture, not an enjoyment. This is what is called Maya. The whole thing is Maya. Hmm. So but that does not mean you should not experience the world. That does not mean you should not go out into the world. But understand that don't fall a prey to it. The whole analysis is you do not fall a prey to it. As long as you are a master, there's no problem. The moment you fall a prey to that temptation, then you have it. Hmm. So handsome here, yeah, all that we're explaining is handsome here. Yeah, handsome here yeah, is not the exterior. 
I need to refer to what Setuji has shared with me. Setuji, can you please give us a little insight to that? I don't know why he chose to send directly to me only. I just told another Maya is a beauty parlor, you know, the, the process which is uh, uh, painful. Uh, in, uh, what they want, these film personalities or celebrities want a perfect nose or they want a perfect cheek or a perfect, I've got little double chin and the double chin must go. So they will do all whatever they can do to remove the double chin. Uh, uh, and, uh, it, huh? came in, uh, it came in press, uh, one wealthy lady in uh, New York, she went for uh, uh, plastic surgery of her nose and uh, she went uh, nearly 22 times and uh, spent uh, millions and ultimately she said she wants it the back the first nose. They said it is very difficult to get it, but she said she was very demanding about it. It's a true story. And then when they did the final surgery, the entire nose became dark and swollen. And they said, we can't do anything more. And... No, I just, we just laugh at this, but look at the absurdity. Looking at the absurdity of mankind, we're laughing, but the whole objective is for us to realize that where am I falling a prey to some at some level even I am falling a prey isn't it something is like same thing Sita fell for the golden deer you fall for the Maya that is Maya isn't it so true sir so true so sad so sad with our Childishness, the, the childishness and the maturity you you exhibit, one exhibits. So, as I have said, this is a, a very uh, uh, very famous, uh, very off-quoted verse. The previous sections dealt with Karmakanda, and this section onwards, he talks of the jnanam, the knowledge, the jnana kanda, and he gives the the highest truths. He by saying. Tade tat satyam, that is this, that unmanifest, that tat refers to the Brahman, which is the unmanifest reality, is this, this refers to the world, the manifested world. That Brahman is this world, means everything in the world is pervaded by Brahman. Everything in the world. So a true jnani or real jnanam is to identify with or identify that in this. That is Gyana. If I am able to see that self in the world, that is real Gyana. The test of Gyana is to see Brahman in the world. Now, there are areas all of us can't see the self, isn't it? There are places or in people where we don't see the self. That is our level. You may not see the self in thy neighbor. You may not be able to see the self in thy partner. You may not be able to see the self in a sinner. The saying is, the strength of a chain is its weakest link. Imagine I have to pull a locomotive, sir. What should be the strength of the chain? 
I'm pulling a locomotive, not an ordinary uh, car or not a mere vehicle, a locomotive. So the chain is a solid chain, huge, thick chain. I'm pulling it. But one of the hooks of that chain is actually uh, made of let's say plastic, solid plastic, rest of it a solid cast iron hooks, but one of the link is plastic. Now the strength of the chain depends on which hooks are, not on all the strong points, but on the weakest point of the chain. Because the moment the weakest point snaps, the chain is no more fit to pull the locomotive. And that is in the center of the chain, finished, the chain becomes redundant, no use. So you want to measure your strength, you measure yourself with areas of your weaknesses, not your strong points. So your weakness is your strength, means that is your level, that's your capacity. Your strength is not in your strong points, your strength is in your measured in your weak points. That's why they say, if you want to grow, you start addressing your weak points, not your strong points. That's when you grow. Even in, in sport, if a coach is coaching you, the coach tries to improve your weakness, the areas of weakness, not your strong points. For example, in badminton, many a badminton player, their backhand is a weak, weak uh, spot. Means it's a, it's a weak area. So I keep seeing the coaches constantly emphasizing on their backstrokes. Forehand, anybody can play, but backhand, can you play? Exactly that way. The you may see self in a in a noble soul. Can you see the same self in a in a shudra? Can you see the same self in a shvapaka, a, a dog eater, a fellow who eats dog meat? It's the lowest of kada. In the Gita, I said, the fellow who insults you. There are people who have talent to bring the worst out of you. Can you see the self in them? They are very talented. Can you see the self in them? That's my level. So that is this. So the real growth is to be able to see that in everything here. Because the entire world is pervaded by Brahman. Tade tat satyam. Yatha sudipta pavaka visfulinga. As the blazing fires, thousands of spark come forth, issue forth. Now here is a, he is giving a famous metaphor of the blazing fire, the fire emanating sparks. So the sparks, if you remember last week when we did the, the yajna, the real homum and the symbolism, the symbolic, rep symbolic representation we gave, we said the sparks, what are the sparks that come out of the fire? I remember saying it. The spark which emanates, and he says, thousands of spark, it's just not one spark. The thousands of spark that keep coming, the spark is the individual. The thousands of spark refers to the multifold beings. So the reference I gave other day was from this, this, this source. So the metaphor has a certain aspects of comparison. Do you have that file that we wrote other day, Dan Daitrima? The file in the, uh, the, the that which you we put on the note on the board there, you have with you. 
What I put it on the board, is it? Um, what we wrote on the board there. Erika? Not in my computer, Nooruji. There it will be there, no? Uh -huh. Sorry. You have a photo in the clear there. One second. Yeah, I have it. So the multifold beings originate from the imperishable and verily return to it. So if you fall back on that, uh, the previous class on Yajna, you get the, the concept. Now, if you remember, we spoke, we gave a reference to the, the concept of the element fire. You remember the element fire? We said the element fire, the fire element is unmanifest, unseen. Fire element, we refer to the Panchikarana by Adi Shankaracharya and Atma Bodha. In Atma Bodha, it talks about the Panchikarana. And he talks of Tanmatras. Tanmatras are the pure elements. The five elements, space, air, fire, water, earth. The pure elements, the pure fire that we talk about, the pure fire is unseen. You don't see that fire. So when I take two pieces of wood and I go through the process of churning, that starts fire. So the fire you see the element fire which is seen represents the unseen. The seen represents the unseen. Just like this represents that. You are following? No, I know you are not following. So don't tell me yes. Harish, why are you in incognito mode today? Sorry, I'm at the office today. There's a bit of uh, office is open today with an exception. That's why I didn't want the interruptions by the office. That's why I'm incognito. That's so. But do you, you are with me? You have been following? Yes, Guruji, I have. Right. So, there is the, the mantra. Were you there last Sunday? Yes, last Sunday. Yes, last Sunday I was there, Guruji. No, I'm just trying to uh, uh, refer to the last satsang uh, because we took a mention, we explained this. So, we said that the fire, the fire element, Unseen element is Brahman. The seen fire represents the unseen. The seen is the idol. The unseen is the ideal. So the manifested fire represents the unmanifest Brahman. This is that. Exactly, I'm reversing and saying the verse says that that is this. I'm saying this is that. Means everything here is that. The world represents Brahman. So the when you perform the fire, the sparks emanate. The sparks are the individual. And he says, they verily return. So 
So the individual when why is the individual born individual born because of asanas so when the vasanas are burnt where would he go he goes back into the fire he goes back into the brahman into the unmanifest hmm So I would I would uh, refer you all to the previous satsang. The takeaways would come your way of the previous session. So just refer to that. It gives you clarity. But here he is just talking about how uh, thousands of sparks means how again he's just a theory. He's just uh, an example. But don't take it literally. Philosophically, you understand how the world has come about. how the beings are born hmm? so the manifold beings originate from the imperishable they verily return to it following harish so so yes kind of most kind of i'm sure it has to be kind of because i'm not explaining it i'm not i'm not expanding on it which part is allowed no there's no doubt there's just there's no doubt we're here you have to process it yeah Exactly. Um, we already have the takeaways, wasn't?